guys, welcome back to Making Everyday Magic. My name is Shauna. If you are new here, we are a homeschooling family of four who is in our sixth year of homeschooling. I have a first grader and a fifth grader. Today, I wanna share with you how we are using Matthew C. Beta with our first grader. Guys, before we go any further, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notification, and give this video a thumbs up. It is greatly appreciated. You can always find everything that we're talking about either linked down below in the description. You can reach out to us down in the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. So I, I don't, I think I had planned to share Matthew C, but like later, but or Matthew C beta specifically for my first grader later, but. I've gotten so many questions about it. I think so many of you are in this same kind of like level that we're in right now that I thought it would be nice to like move it up. So here is what I wanna do. Let me give you a little bit of background on Matthew C program. I was introduced to it through our Timberdoodle non-religious curriculum kits. We love it. It works really well for us. It is um, a, like a multi kind of product approach. There is a DVD that gives you the video instructions. There is an online digital access code where you can do the less, all the things online and even generate additional worksheets. There is a book that has worksheets in it um, for each lesson. There are 30 lessons a level. Uh, there is a test booklet that has a test for each lesson, but then also unit tests, which are cumulative for a few lessons. And then one of the things that I feel like sets the Matthew C program apart is that they have um, a block system. So they have integers that are specific to their program. So like the blocks on the page are the same size as the block in the hand. Um, you know, the cream color block is always seven. seven. Yeah, seven. I think seven. But like the green block is always one. Like I like their approach that they use. They are not a secular company, as you guys know we are, but it is math and I have yet to find anything that just rubs me the wrong way as far as being a secular homeschooler. So it's, again, it's math. Um, but you make your own decisions. I've made mine, I'm comfortable with those. So math you see is also a different approach in that it is a mastery approach instead of a spiral method. So what that means is right about, right about third grade, uh, when kids start learning multiplication and division, um, it splits from your, your classic like public school, at least what's common in our public schools here. So instead of learning multiplication and division, she learned multiplication, like all of it. And then the next year, all division. Uh, so like, for example, my older daughter is in fifth grade now and she is now doing all of fractions in epsilon. So. She hadn't gotten that before. There's little touchings and little things that plant the seed. Um, but now that I'm on the backside of that with my older daughter, I can see the massive benefits to this approach, at least for my own children. So it has worked really, really well. Like fractions are going really easy. It's blowing my mind. I'm just constantly, boom. Um, so this is actually <clears throat> my second time using Matthew C beta because I use it for my older daughter, but that's the first level we used was the first one was beta. So now I've used all the way up through epsilon because it started younger with my younger one. Um, she is a first grader. This was included in the second grade Timberdoodle kit because she's ahead a level because she went really fast one year, um, her like, pre-K year, something really, really early. She went really fast. She's at level, one level ahead. So now we are in Matthew C beta. Now Matthew C beta is multiple digit addition and subtraction. So what that means is regrouping. Yes. So my six year old is doing regrouping. Now, this is I think a really good time to share with you. And my plan is to, I am filming this this week. My plan is to film every day of our math together next week, which is great because she's on lesson 11, which is rounding to the nearest hundred and then addition with regrouping. So I think this will be perfect time to stop and talk about this because that's kind of one of the big questions I get is about the regrouping, how it's going like, oh, people. Okay, so I think this will be good. So I'm gonna take you along with how we are doing and what we are doing. I will also give you a little downshot of all of the product because I think that's nice to have. I have a box I will link down below that fits all the thingies because it's the other thing is there, you know, the box that it comes in just, it's cardboard, it doesn't hold up. Um, at least not for the how many years I've been using it. Six years, I mean, no, four years. Four years I've been using it. That might, uh, that might be right. But I'm excited. So I'm gonna take you through. Now let me map out what we do. Monday, DVD lesson, okay? 
check. I do not do everything as prescribed. Okay, Liz, I, I always feel like I have to say this, but let's just assume I never do anything as prescribed. Okay, so there are, there's a DVD video lesson. There are seven worksheets for every week. There's a lesson test for every week. And then there are unit tests that are cumulative. I do not do all of that. That is too much. It's too much. It's too much. I also don't require that my six year old um, have memorized and mastered all, I mean, my other kid either. I don't require complete memorization of all of the facts. That's not how we roll. And I'm okay with that. I want them to know how to get it. I don't require that my six year old knows all of those things in her brain because I just don't think that that is important. So again, you do you and I'm going to do me. So anyways, Monday, we watch the lesson. Tuesday, we do sheet A. If we are good with sheet A, we skip to C on Wednesday. If we are good with sheet C on Wednesday, then we skip to... And I think those are the ones that are lesson specific. And then the, the next ones are systematic review. And the last one is enrichment and application. So if we are good with C on Wednesday, then on Thursday, we will skip ahead to E, which is the systematic review. And it just kind of like backs up all of the things we've done to that point. So that one is not lesson specific. And then we will do a unit test if it happens to be when there's a unit test. And that is it. And that is good enough. And she's got it. And I'm excited to take you along. Um, it's going well. And I think we're going to be okay. But this is me talking about what's happening in the future. So hopefully it goes well. We'll see. All right, guys, I just wanted to give you a little bit of look at the program. So this is beta and it comes with the package that I bought, comes with the DVD instruction, the test book, the teacher's guide, which is hardback, and then the student workbook, as well as a um, like digital online platform. So as you can see, one of the things that I absolutely love about the math UC program is that the blocks, the integers go specifically with there, um, let me see if I can find one that's got a block set up here and I'll show you. Uh, but the blocks are like the same size and so it's really easy to use them across the program. It's not in this level, it's in the previous level. Um, but I, it, I will have this link box linked down below. As you can see, it fits the, the, the blocks really well. One of the things that came with our block set uh, was this chart, which I think is so cute because it's decimal street. And so I do really, really feel like because this is multiple digit addition and subtraction, it really shows you that you can only put, you can only put nine of the unit blocks in here before they just won't fit. And then you've got to go up to tens and then you can only put, put tens before you've got to go up to hundreds. So it really does help with the, um, principle that kind of hands on physical understanding of regrouping and carrying. So I think that that is really nice on this side is like a clock. Um, anyway, so we have the DVD instruction, Mr. Demi teaches the student workbook, which as you can see is very kind of like white and black and plain, but it's also not, I mean, it's not too much. Every lesson there are 30 has letters A through G being G being application and enrichment. DEF being the systematic review, which is everything you've learned to that point, and then lesson practice being specific to this individual lesson. Then the test booklet, there is a unit, a, a lesson test for every lesson, and then a unit test every so many chapters. Like this one's lessons one through 15 is unit two for this. And then the instructor manual, which has the lessons and then in the back has the answer guide for the test and the lesson pages. So that is this program, the uh, beta level Matthew C. Now I just wanna show you what my daughter has been doing to help her because I just thought it was the cutest thing. She, like let's just say we've got uh, what seven, and five. Okay. So let's say we're adding seven and five and she came up with this all on her own. What she does is she gets what it is equivalent to. So we've got our 10 and our two, and then she will actually load the 10 onto the two and have it drive it up to go to the, the next, the top of the next column. 
And then her answer will be down here. So when she gets her answer, she drives it up. She uses the block like a little car. And I think that's helping her realize that she needs to carry it on. So I personally like that she came up with that little, little bit on her own. I thought it was super adorable and worth sharing. Eleven. Here you go. I'm going to do this. Let's start here. Okay, right here. Do you see what they want you to do? Okay, well, hurry up and do that. Do you remember how to round to the nearest hundred? Do you remember what Mr. Demi said? No. No? Okay. Look at your number. What's the first number? Can you tell me the first number? Ninety. Nope, there's, there's something in front of that. What is that first number? Nine. One hundred. One hundred and nine cents. No, there's no money. 190. Okay. Now they want you to add to the nearest hundred. Can you put your pencil on the hundreds place? What number's in the hundreds place? One. A one. So in order to round to the nearest hundred, we need to look at the number that's next to it. What number is next to it? Nine. Is, what place is nine in? What place Ten. is the nine? Ten. Ten. That's right. So, in order to figure out the hundred, we need to look at the tens place. What number's in the tens place? Nine. Nine. Do you remember if nine rounds up or down? Up. Up. So, if we round, if we have the nine, the nine is going to make the one go up. What does the one go up to? Up to two. Two. So if we're rounding to the nearest hundred, we would put a two in the hundreds place. Oh, on the line. On the line, yeah, on the line. And two. then what would we follow that up with? What's in the tens place? We're just looking at whole hundreds. So it's gonna be- Hundred, zero, zero. Perfect job. Okay, can you do the next one? Depending on which place they ask you to, to round to, you look just to the right of that. So if we're rounding to the hundreds place, can you point to the hundreds place? Okay, so we need to look just to the right of that. We need to look to the tens place. Now the tens place has a what? Five. Five go up or down, do you remember? Up. Five goes up. So what does this number go up to? Up to 500. Perfect job, write it down. Great job, buddy. Do you remember which page you're doing today? Yeah. Okay, let me help you, friend. We're on chapter 11. Okay, I'm gonna let you choose. Yeah. Do you wanna do D, E, or F? D, E, or F. 
What do you mean? Do you want to do, which sheet do you want to do? D, E, or F? Oh. How much do you want? They're all a full page. It looks like they're all 20 problems. Can you do one? D, E, and F? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, that's fine. Which one do you want to do? You have to do front and back, baby. No, I didn't. The good news is, is you don't have to do your rounding each one and estimating. So which one would you like to do? D, E, or F? That's your choice. If you want, I will let you do this. I will let you do this page of this one and this page of this one. Deal. Deal. Where are you starting? Half this one. Okay, right here. Skip, they, skip count by two. Can you skip count by two? Two. Okay. I'm going to go swap the laundry deal. All right, guys, I hope that you found any of that helpful, entertaining, or informative. I hope that it helped to answer some of your questions about using the Matthew C. Beta program. I hope it gave you a little bit of ideas on how we incorporate it. Maybe I think a lot of people feel a lot of stress around this curriculum because there's so many pieces and then that expectation that everything is memorized, but just, I mean, okay. Chill, it's fine. You're fine, it's fine, they're fine, we're fine, it's fine, okay? All right, guys, I hope that you found it helpful, entertaining, or informative. If you did, please scroll down, hit that big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. As always, you can find me down in the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. Bye, guys.